My favorite um, operas were uh, was uh, the the Mozart operas. I loved doing it. I did a Susanna, which I loved doing it because it was it was very flippity jibbit naughty and uh, it fitted my uh, um, myself the way I and my character, you know. Hello, Barbara. How are you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. And it's such a joy to be able to speak to you today and have a. We, I hope we're going to have a lovely little talk today. Yes, well, Barbara, um, I admired you as a, a when I was a child in South Africa, and I know my father also I was a big admirer of yours and uh, had your records, and um, and your sister as well. She was a singer, Leonore. That's right, Leonore. Yeah, she was three years older than I was. She's the old, the eldest of the of the Fiennemann sopranos. Oh, I see. And did you ever sing together? Well, when we were younger, we used to sing duets at concerts, you know. And yeah. we did sing two operas together. It was um, two bartered brides we did. Oh, I see. Okay, she was Majenka. And I was Harta. I okay. was the mother of the village idiot. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd always had these very funny roles and I loved doing them. Really? Uh, that's, it's mm. in me to be funny and to laugh and to be, mm. and uh, I'm an actress. I, I act while I'm singing very, very, very over the top. <laughs> oh, I see. But but how did you start singing? Because, uh, of course, it, if if your sister also sang, it must have had come from a musical family. Yes, well, my mother used to sing very, very prettily. She mm. was a soprano, and but they lived in a small little village, and there wasn't lots of chances for her to 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 sing. But they had these little concerts, and she used to sing in these little concerts. And when we were we were born, we also had all this lovely music in our home. And uh, she taught us to sing. She taught my sister to sing. She taught me to sing, and also little brother soprano. He was a bit oh, uh, younger than than uh, uh, Leonore and myself. Uh, he was ten years younger than Leonore, and seven years younger than what I was. So he listened to all these soprano voices, and he decided no, he's he was going to become a soprano mm. himself. Mm. And he used to sing these very high, beautiful notes, much more beautiful than we could ever sing them. Amazing. And did he end up singing as well? As yes, as yes. Yes, he, he made two um, little, uh, see, uh, what do you call them? Um, uh, these smallish little oh, yeah, LPs. Yeah, the what do you call yeah. them? Yeah, the same yeah, singles the, we call But they were... They, yeah. Yeah, well, there was there was quite a few little songs on it, mm -hmm. and uh, he, it was very popular. The people loved it, and uh, they called him the the little nightingale boy singer. Singer, oh, really? and uh, he mm -hmm. sang with the um, SABC orchestra, mm -hmm. and also did the role of the little boy who said saw the hand of the cloud in the 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 Isaiah. You, uh, uh, the what? Yeah. The Elijah. Can you oh, remember that? Uh, no, I can't yes. remember that. But yeah. Mm. Well, they had this this um, in the uh, uh, the town hall in Joburg, and mm. there was this little boy with his short pants, singing with uh, all these great singers, and he got the best reviews. Really? <laughs> singing on this little box. Oh, isn't and that his name is Benny Fienemans. Benny Fienemans. Oh, okay. Yes, he later on became a doctor, yeah. and he passed away a few years ago. Oh, he got so TB sorry. from his patients. Oh, I see. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, mm. it's a bit of a sad time for us. 
Yeah, of course. But Barbara, you you were in the uh, in the time when it was sort of the height also of of cultural in in South Africa, and, and I've I've spoken to um, somebody the other day who told me uh, I think it was Mario Cassi who told me about the theater the the state theater in in Pretoria. Uh, that had these wonderful visits from from uh, um, opera singers from all over the world, very famous opera singers yes, from all over the yes, world. Yes. They came to sing there, and and sadly now the the um, opera house doesn't exist anymore. This the state opera has closed down. Mm, it's just a, a white elephant, really. Oh, it, and it's such a beautiful, but beautiful theater, mm. and it's such a really it's terrible. That something like that had to happen yeah. and it cost millions and it's all lost mm. but you sang you sang at the time did you sing in the in the state uh, theater yes i sang um at the opening we really? did a little from from the fledermaus and i did the adele okay. i loved playing adele because she was such a naughty little thing Oh. <laughs> Taking the thing over, you know, dancing around here, dancing around there, making noises and having fun. <laughs> but and and so this your career, you you had a um, you were full time opera singer at that time. No, well, they only had a few men uh, that they had a uh, full time. Uh, they didn't have uh, any lady uh, sopranos or mezzos or anything uh, yeah. that was full time. Was, we just sang our contracts, you know, you get a contract to sing this role and then you have a contract to sing that role. And uh, but I was kept quite busy. Oh, yeah. I sang I sang for all the uh, performing arts councils. But most I did for PACT in Pretoria because this is my hometown and it was quite nice for me to be at home. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. And so um, in, in those days, so did, uh, could you then tour also in the world with, with PACT? Did they also do that? No, PACT never, never went overseas. Uh, but I did some concerts with... Uh, uh, we did um, an Annie Get Your Gun. Oh, I yeah. sang Annie. Really? Um, oh, I love that musical. In, in Namibia. I loved it. It was delicious. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then uh, I did some a concert tour with Hay Corsten in Zimbabwe, a two-week oh, wow. tour, mm -hmm. which was quite interesting. It was in a, in a very bad time at that time, you know. Mm -hmm. The people were very downhearted and the shops were empty and everybody was poor and we just brought them a little bit of joy by having these lovely concerts for, yeah. for the people. Well, you mentioned Hai Korsta now. He was also a very um, a famous singer in South Africa. And uh, did you know him very well? Did you sing a lot with him? Yes, I sang quite a lot with him. Really? I did. Uh, I did plenty of concerts here in South Africa with him, as well. And then we did these beautiful kismet, a musical, um, and that was that was absolutely a, a such a beautiful a musical. And we sang that together. And uh, oh, we sang in Fledermaus. He was the Eisenstein. And also in the Bartered Bride with my sister, so I've done quite a lot of of operas with him. Amazing! And now, um, and uh, did you study? Uh, did you go and study music? How did you end up singing opera then? Well, I started singing when I was three. That mm. makes it eighty years now. Really? Oh, but <laughs> Barbara, you don't look eighty-three. <laughs> I'm going to be 84 next month. <laughs> really? I cannot believe that you look really young and your spirit also is very young. Yes, well, it's the music that keeps us going in this house. Yeah. Mm. We're, we're, we're never without any music in this house. In Ever since I've, I was, I can remember, we lived music. 
And uh, we all started singing at three, which was so funny because then we could sing and remember the words and remember the the tunes and things. Michelle started singing at three. I started singing at three. Little Rochelle started singing at three. So uh, uh, this is a very funny year for us. And uh, we've never stopped since. (laughs) And do you still sing? Oh, well, now and then a little bit of uh, croaky sound, you know. But Mm -hmm. um, Michelle loves putting little trios together for us. Um, And then we do them light music, which we did the um, three little maids from school. Yeah. Can you, do you know that one? No, I don't, no. It's it's a Gilbert and Sullivan. Oh, I see. Okay. Three little Uh maids. Three little maids. (laughs) <laughs> that we did, and we acted it with our little um, Japanese clothes and umbrellas and things. And we had these little three little girls from school. The one was 82, and the other mm-hmm. one was middle-aged, and the, uh, the other one was 15. Oh, okay. Going to school, three little maids from school. <laughs> that was quite funny. Oh, this is amazing. I like, I love that. <laughs> But you still yes, do but, that, yeah. Yes, that that type of thing I do, yeah. but I don't sing. I don't sing solo anymore. Oh, I My see. last solo solo performance I did was in the um, the uh, the Mandela Theatre in Joburg. They mm-hmm. had uh, they did the, the Merry Widow, and then they they asked all the people who used to sing in the Merry Widow to come and do a gala performance one night. So they could only get uh, another lady, myself, and uh, Darvik Hussain. (laughs) And then we, we, and he sang his little song and the the ladies all sang Velia. And I had the last, I had the last bit of the the Velia, the last verse that I sang, I sang it. Oh, beautiful. It's supposed to to stop with a very soft note, you know. Yeah. But I thought, this is gala. I'm not going to sing that note softly. I'm <laughs> going to give them a big noise. And I brought the house down with that big noise, singing Velia with a loud noise note <laughs> instead of doing it softly. <laughs> well, you have, to, you have to do your thing. And this, this is your character, yeah. it seems. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes. I love it. But now, Barbara, <laughs> in, in, in the times that you, you were, um, say, in the height of your career, was it, was it uh, much different to now? Or did, did you also at that time have to sort of manage yourself and organize your own concerts and so on? Yes, well, concerts, the people loved concerts. They used to ask us to do a lot of concerts. They they. We had lots of concerts, which was wonderful, and um, and they had full pro. All the um, performing arts councils had full opera programs, mm-hmm. seasons. You know, my favorite um, operas were uh, was uh, the the Mozart operas. I loved doing it. I did a Susanna, which I loved doing it because it was. It was very flippity gibbet naughty, and uh, it fitted my uh, um, myself the way I had my character, you know. And I could get my teeth into it. It was just lovely and delicious. Uh, so uh, they 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 really did quite a few uh, Mozart operas. They um, Leo Quayle was a the, the conductor. He mm. was a great um, Mozart fan. And I sang in all of them. They were lovely. Mm. I sang in the in, in in the Don Giovanni. We did two 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 seasons of Don Giovanni. When I did the Tzadlina, and also um, Cosi Fan Tutte, which I did the Despina. Oh, okay. and this and, yes, and this uh, 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 director had me pushing the decor around on stage. Really? And then I'd have to sing, then I'd have to sing my aria after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> we all get through it. <laughs> yeah, but but um and now um I've spoken to a few opera singers, um young opera singers, and they say and and or somebody mentioned the other day that, you know, there's no more full operas happening. You know, a, a playing and it's it's not uh that way anymore. That that you know that you can go to a theater and and see a full opera. Well, the only the only a uh, 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 theater that's still in working order is um, uh, the Artscape down in Cape Town. And they work with the University of Cape Town with all their uh, uh, students and, and singers. And, and uh, you know, Pretty Yende was also one of oh, yeah. those mm -hmm. girls coming from the Cape. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the rest is absolutely nothing is going on. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there was an uh, uh, Opera Africa tried something and it just was a flop afterward. It, it didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And in, in South Africa, Oh, I mean, in Pretoria, at the State Theatre, they had uh, uh, the Black Tie Ensemble. And it went for a while, and then it also petered out. So the people don't seem to be interested in it anymore. I, mm -hmm. I can't understand it. We had this, this wonderful, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, yeah. and the 90s, it was absolutely wonderful. We had packed houses with kismet they even sold the tickets on the black market you know really and they used to say oh, can't we just sit on the stairs we must come and see it you know that it, the people were read really they were absolutely mad for for good music and now i don't know where they've all gone to no. there's nobody left that interested but but um, there's a lot of I mean if if you look at South Africa and the situation in in South Africa, uh, what uh, Michelle also said the other day that I thought about a lot was that um, you know audiences are also maybe scared to go into the city at night and you know and then yes it's, it's dangerous and yeah. COVID has a great influence. Mm -hmm. on 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 performing i mean you don't want to go and uh, 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 use a lot of money and do this big uh, opera a production and you can only have a few people in the audience yeah <laughs> that's yeah. not it it's not viable you know yeah so then, um yeah but it, if, if i think um for example in um I was born in the 60s and I grew up with with having the arts and I know my my parents you know we my dad always played the records in the house and of course we didn't have social media and and streaming and all that sort of thing but yeah. I was sort of, uh, you know uh, and, and I remember going to see Carmen in Pretoria in in the side theater as well which was a beautiful production yeah you could see me in it was it I sang Frasquita Really, I was the that... cigarette, the cigarette girl. I smoked yeah. on stage. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was, was terribly was, naughty. I was thinking with of... long hair yeah. <laughs> and a that dirty was... nose. Yeah. Uh, that was at the end, um, in, in the eighties. That was around eight, 1987, 1988 that I saw it. You know that I was there. Oh, I. Yeah. Mine was in in. in in 80. Mine was in 80 when I sang the Frisquita. Okay. Well, maybe oh. I still, yeah. But um, but now I'm thinking also that um, in South Africa, it's almost as if, how do you educate the audiences into listening to uh, a variety of classical music and not just the usual uh, things that they hear? And how do you uh, develop this love in in children now um, in South Africa because you cannot take a child to a theatre because there are no theatres anymore. You know, I before I started singing opera, I was a school teacher, and my subject, of course, was singing music, music, and 
and I also had I also did English, but my 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 main subject was music singing, and uh, they don't have that in the schools anymore. Really, because I used to teach the children how to appreciate the beautiful music. Uh, one day I took a, a standard two class, a tiny little children. And I thought I'm going to teach you something today. So I took Samson and Delilah, and I played the part where he was he was uh, going to bring down those great big pillars. Um, and killing everybody inside there. But the music is before he does that. There is a beautiful piece of music. Um, and I played it to the, to these children. And I, I told them about the, now, now you can hear there, there are the dancing girls. You can, can you hear the dancing girls with the music? Um, can you hear the people coming in? And oh, can you imagine them bringing in Poor Samson, and he's going to do something terrible. And I was really dramatizing the story with this while the music was playing. I told them to listen to this and to listen to that, and they they were absolutely they they couldn't stop watching me and listening. So when the class was was done, they came back again. They came back again for the next class, which was, they had two classes a week. So I said, okay, we're going to do some singing, some music today again. What must I play? Samson, please, miss. Really? So I thought, yeah. you, what, what, you can really bring children to love music. that Because that's a very intricate piece of music that they played there. But because of me telling them to listen to the music and to to think of what the fantasies of music can bring, it it, it was just absolutely. I thought it was a miracle. I couldn't believe yeah. my eyes when they said, "Samson, Miss." <laughs> yeah, but uh, I spoke to a young conductor, uh, oh, a young um, uh, composer, uh, a while ago, and he said that he went into a school and he. I think it was the children were seven years old or eight years old, and he did a little composing workshop with them. They didn't have any background in music. It was just something to to do with them. And he said he couldn't believe with what they came up with in, in composing, you know, that it came naturally for them. And now that you're saying that you're telling the story, isn't it amazing how children are so, um, yeah. But you know, Pact had had a, a program with the orchestra, the Pact Orchestra. Um, they went to all the high schools in Transvaal. We used to call it Transvaal. It's now Gauteng. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and and they asked me to do the the narrating, and uh, we'd bring bring in this half of the orchestra went with me and the, the other half went with George Cox. So they had two schools they could do a, a day. And uh, then you'd bring the orchestra onto the stage and they'd start warming up and the children would come in and that, you know, what are we going to listen to today? <laughs> you know, that, uh, you know, the teenagers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had such fun. We uh, we demonstrated all the all the uh, the uh, the instruments. We had very naughty people in the orchestra. They were very naughty, and the children loved it. They even made me lay an egg one day, whilst the um, the uh, <laughs> one of the uh, 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 clarinet. You know, oh, they yeah. take the mouthpiece off. And they go, <laughs> then they, they, they did this behind my back. And the other one came up with an egg. And the children <laughs> were rolling in the aisles. They thought this was very funny. Yeah. So the, we had such fun there. And the, the, the brass played real jazz for the children, you know. Mm -hmm all the the, uh, the brass instruments. So it was such a, uh, as well, the children would say, it was such a joy. Yeah. And <laughs> then after a while, 
uh, they'd, they'd go and find one of the little teachers that was very shy and so on, and she had to come and conduct the orchestra. Now, the the, uh, the conductor would did show her how to do it with a little stick and everything, and uh, then the orchestra would start playing. And if she goes fast, they go fast. If she goes slow, they go slow. <laughs> and the children were having such fun. But yeah. in between, we played um, uh, Mozart. Mm. We played um, Beethoven, little pieces, you know, that we yeah. played. We played beautiful music in between all this fun. Yeah. So. These, you know, teenagers that started off like that wouldn't let us go home. No, mm. they wanted more. Come on, come on, we want more, 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 more. So it, you can do that. Yeah. Yes. And that was a very, very good program for mm. the for the children. They don't yeah. even have singing in school anymore. They can't <laughs> sing anymore. The the South Africans can't see anymore because they don't sing. Yeah, but um, and, and that is so it, it shows you that it, you can do with so little time, you can uh, actually um, create a love for the for the music and children. If you just take some, yeah. I can see that it's not, it's not brain surgery. It's yeah. fun. Music can be fun, even if it's serious. Yeah. It can be beautiful. Yeah. And, and you can make your own fantasy and think of, Oh, I can hear this, and I can hear that. Oh, listen to the the flute. Oh, the flute is so beautiful. Uh, I wonder what I could think, what story I could think uh, about a, a piece of flute music, you know? Yeah. And and yeah, nothing is happening now. And there's such it's such a wide uh, a road you can go with music, but they've stopped yeah. it all. Nothing is happening. Yeah. And it's really sad because I think it's, uh, you know, there's, there's so much focus on maths and science and, and all these subjects. And, and music is such a great part of, of our lives. And it's also, you know, so connected with the sciences, actually. Yes, it is connected. Because, you know, being a teacher, I have been teaching Rochelle since she was in grade R. And she's now in grade 10. And Granny is still helping her with her homework and with her, her learning exercises and preparing for exams and doing um, science and maths. Her father helps her with the maths. Yeah. Granny is not very up with maths because uh, I never took maths. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was also never good with maths, but hey, here I am. I'm still alive. I, I just thought, what, what? Why must I do that? It's not. Yeah. I'm not going to work. I'm not going to become a doctor. So I don't want yeah. to be. Don't want to do maths. Yeah. But oh, this is so wonderful to talk to you. I, um. But but tell me now, Barbara. What advice do you have? Because also there are many young. Um, artists that I've spoken to that uh, are either studied uh, or still studying in South Africa at the moment or have just finished their studies. What is your advice for young singers that, that are now um, in South Africa trying to make a living? Well, they must start getting together and forming groups. And even if they don't get a lot of money, go and sing in little concerts. Doesn't matter. That, uh, I saw a little uh, picture the other day about a little boy playing playing on a flute, and a little dog was sitting in front of him, looking like this, and it said, "Doesn't matter how big your audience is." Yeah, <laughs> oh, that is so sweet. <laughs> and that, that's what everybody should now. Concentrate on just do things. Get people to listen to what you're doing. Let, let's all start loving music again. We must build a beautiful love for this beautiful music because music makes you happy. 
Music is so good for your soul. Good gracious, even a cow gives more milk when it listens to music. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I read about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, 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 they, they must just get together and do things. Mm. You mustn't wait for a person like Michelle. She does everything. She mm. doesn't wait for people to tell her, do this, do this, do that. She goes about and she 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 makes videos and she 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 does beautiful harmonies on music. We're always busy. She's always busy. Day in and day out, she's got her day job. Then when she comes home, she's she's busy with music. And um so our home is absolutely filled with music and it That's and it's wonderful. so beautiful and so yeah. delicious. What what a privilege, really, that you. Um, but but also, and and I've spoken to Michelle as well, and now I'm sp speaking to you, and your whole energy and how you, uh, it, it's so you look as if you enjoy life and and uh, and have many things to be grateful for. Yes, yes. Michelle always says this is one of the most loud uh, loudest. Her homes she has ever come across. Oh, really? And the one who makes the most, most, most noise is the mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I, I would want to challenge. I don't sing, but, but I, uh, I get a bit loud when I get uh, upset when, when, uh, when, when the children were younger and they, they didn't listen. You know, then I would. And then my daughter one day said to me, we lived in England, and my daughter one day said to me, uh, Mom, you, you're probably happy that we live in a detached house now because now the neighbors can't hear you anymore. <laughs> Luckily, we've got a big earth, and I call it my park, so we can really go to town here and make a big, big noise. <laughs> She always says, you know, you are so loud that people in a pavilion can hear you without a microphone. <laughs> oh, I love that. Hey, you have a voice. You must use it. So, yeah. Yes, well, you're sing singing in these big um, th uh, uh, theatres. You have yeah. to even speak. You've got to project your your speaking yeah. voice as well as your singing voice. So yeah. that's, that's why I'm I speak too loudly. I must keep it down, they say. <laughs> it's very difficult for me. <laughs> no, Barbara, don't change. I like that. I like that you do that. <laughs> but oh, well. Barbara, tell me now, what, what is Christmas like for you? What do you do? What do you how do you celebrate Christmas? Oh dear. Michelle has made now a beautiful, beautiful album. Of of uh, Christmas music, which yeah. we play during Christmas time, we play our own music. We love yeah. it. Yeah, and uh, we have my my son, uh, Rochelle's daddy. Yeah. Um, they go to his his uh, uh, his fiance. They go the, the previous night, Christmas Eve. They spend with their, uh, with her family, and then on Christmas Day, they come to us. Oh, and okay. when we all have this beautiful, everybody brings something. We have a delicious dinner, dinner, yeah. and, uh, well, Michelle and I are, are very boring. We oh. can't drink champagne. It makes us ill. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that terrible? But uh, drink a bit of today. They drink a bit of champagne, and we we have fun, and we play music, and uh, mm -hmm. um, that's and, wonderful. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, it's now you have a lovely day yeah. usually. Yeah, and it's it's summer in summer in South Africa, so the weather is also nice. Yes, well, we've been having such a lot of rain, which was. Which is so absolutely gorgeous because we've been praying for rain, and now it rains every night. It rains, really? and I'm so because my my beautiful big garden was dying, and now mm. it's all green and everything is growing so beautifully. Oh, wonderful! Oh, yeah, I can't say thank you enough for this yeah. beautiful rain. 
Amazing. But the days are sunny at the moment, but it does become quite warm and hot. Oh, but okay. uh, we haven't got lots of sun at the moment, which we like. Yes. Well, I hope we, we, get get tired. we get tired of all the heat, you know. <laughs> so I will never go a bit uh, overcast and cooler. Yeah. Anyway, well, maybe the, maybe the sun will be there on Christmas Day. We hope you. so. We hope yeah. so. Because yeah. we, we can take beautiful pictures outside and we yeah. usually take lots of photos. We love oh, taking photos. Oh, and uh, and we put them on, on Facebook as well. Oh, great. So I, I, we will be able to see what you've done for Christmas. You'll see the nonsense we do when, when it's Christmas. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> oh, well, that's great. But um, You'll see our two dogs as well because they think they are also people. Oh, really? But these, yes, these... They, don't think mm -hmm. they don't think they're dogs, you know. I Amazing. should have brought them in to, you for you to come say hello to you. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, but Barbara, tell me now, the um, uh, last question, what is your wish for the future? What is your wish for 2022? I wish that we could have peace and love and prosperity, and that this country of ours will start blooming and become a beautiful country again. And love everybody, love each other, and start loving music again. Let's all come and sing together, like the Welsh people. They, I, I find them so magnificent, especially when they sing their, 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 uh, their song uh, when they play rugby. It sounds like this huge, big choir. They've got the most beautiful voices. And uh, I, I, I just wish that we could all become big singers in South Africa. Yeah. And when we go to our rugby uh, uh, games, we must sing our, our song with gusto. Yeah. And with yeah. happiness. Yeah. Well, there's so uh, it's it's uh, there are so many wonderful Afrikaans songs as well. So it's it would be great to to rediscover those as well. You know, for for young yes, children, I think. Beautiful. Um, I used to to love singing um, Afrikaans art songs. Really, especially when I was a, a teenager, mm -hmm. my singing teacher used to used to uh, uh, make us uh, sing in the Eisteddfords, you know? And they usually always have an item that you, you sing an Afrikaans uh, art song. And uh, like Esleru Malire and Limmer and, oh, they, 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 they wrote such beautiful music. Mm. And... Uh, it's lovely to be able to sing in Afrikaans too. But you know, Afrikaans is a very difficult language to sing in. Really? Because it, yes, it's, it's Afrikaans is guttural. Yes, mm. you brought after and you kill. Mm. Now you can't sing there, it's, it doesn't sound very nice. So you yeah. have to push the Afrikaans forward where you sing in English. You must sing Afrikaans where you sing in English on the stiff upper lip, you know. So. Oh, okay. Oh, I <laughs> yes, you have that. But yeah, yes, I... no, it's, it's very difficult for us to sing Afrikaans beautifully. It can mm -hmm. go flat. The sound can flatten because mm -hmm. it's very guttural, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are so many consonants as well in Afrikaans. Mm -hmm. in, we, we don't have such a lot of vowels like in, in German. They have these vowels. Mm. It's all mm. consonants, you know, which yeah. makes it difficult to make a, a beautiful, round, and 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 uh, uh, exciting sound. Yeah, oh, so I didn't know it's, that. Yeah. It's, it's quite, you must do a great study mm. to be able to sing Afrikaans beautifully. Mm. With a beautiful sound, and I have been so so lucky to be able to sing the Susanna 
of Mozart in Afrikaans. Really? As well as the two Fledermauses we did yeah. in Afrikaans. And we we also did um, Janis Kiki. Or was that in English? Or we did Janis Kiki in English. But uh, uh, we did most of our, our song, our, our operas in Afrikaans or English. Really? Oh, I didn't yes. know that. So, so you, that was all translated for you? All translated. We did The Bartered Bride in English. And uh, we did, uh, we did the, the Carmen in English. And they, they had an imported tenor. And he sang French. And the rest sang in English. Really? <laughs> My goodness, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> that was quite a mix-up, but it yeah. went down quite well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, and and your um, your granddaughter, she also, do you teach her also the Afrikaans uh, singing? Oh, yeah. I'm still, we, we, uh, we, we did a bit of, of practicing yesterday, singing a little Afrikaans song, and we we uh, we told her she must watch out not to become guttural, and to push it forward, and to sing it round in front, and use your use your uh, uh, your jawbone, the top, not the bottom. You can't sing them with the with the uh, with your jaw, the bottom jaw. It's better to use the top jaw. And then uh, your teeth helps you to push it forward and place it nice and high. And uh, then you get nice sounds out of it. Wow. Oh, is, <laughs> that's um, one of so uh, Ruth Marie's little uh, called Lentilit. We've mm. all sung that little song. Michelle. And I did, and little Rochelle sang that when she was this high, she sang mm. in the ice station, she sang uh, Flutter, Flutter, Flinder Key. And oh. it was quite beautiful, the words, Flutter, Flutter, Flinder Key, you know? Yeah. It takes it out of you. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to be very good at your diction. Well, she's got, the, she's got the best teachers there for her to teach her, isn't it? So Michelle is the technician. She's a great technician. And I do the coloring bits. Oh, okay. I color, I color okay. it, make it pretty. <laughs> oh, Barbara, this is so wonderful. You are. Uh, it's so wonderful to talk to you, really. And um, I hope that I can uh, meet you all in person one day when I come to South Africa yeah. again. Yeah, we would love. You so must wonderful. come and we call it cook and tea. Do you yes. know cook and tea? Yeah, cook and well, tea. Well, we all have cook and tea. Yeah. You must have cook and tea with us when you come. Yeah. And we have a great fun. We have a concert. <laughs> oh, that would be wonderful. But um, but uh, thank you so much for your time and for speaking to me and, and for all you've done for South African music and all these years and uh, still uh, inspiring. And, um, and I hope really that your wish comes true, that there will be more music and more opportunities for oh, young people to sing in South Africa. Yeah. Yes, we do need it. We do need, we need the schools to sing. Yeah. Because that's yeah. where you start. Yeah. That's where you start. Mm -hmm. If you haven't got any music in your home, but you do have it in school, that already yeah. helps a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that children love singing. When, when I used to teach, the children loved coming to the singing class because I taught them lovely songs, songs they liked. Yeah. And uh, it was fun, we, we sometimes uh, did little moves on them and or played little instruments with them, little, mm -hmm. you know, and oh, that's all gone and that's such a pity. That's such a pity. They've taken yeah. out the, the joy out of singing. Yeah. But I just think um, my wish is that that all children can have the opportunity to do music or art, some form of art in school, even if it's dancing, music, uh, expressive arts. Mm -hmm. 
uh, but but some form of art. And I think the more we say it and the more we express our wishes, the more possibility there is that they come true. So you've also now expressed a wonderful wish. So maybe that will all, you know, all come true. We just have to. If they can it. just do it and love it, it's so yeah. it gives you such pleasure if you start working. And you start working with music, with notes, and and with harmonies, and with beautiful top notes. Mm. There's nothing yeah. more beautiful than a beautiful high note. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. Well, Barbara, thank you so much, and um, I hope to see you soon. Yes, thank you, and you come cook and tea with us, eh? I will come <laughs> and cook and tea. <laughs>